Law. And in the love and memory of Richard Antoine. Oh, 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 oh. Uh-huh. of the universe and this is about 4 or 3 a.m it's 4 a.m in the morning and i've changed location as you can see today i'd like to talk about my favorite superhero yes my favorite superhero superman now as a child i grew up on superman basically on ideas um as a child <laughs> i said that too many times um basically me as a kid damien kapinga as a kid loved superman i had watched the first movie the 1976 or 19 one of the 1970s movie the first movie and i loved it you know i watched the cassette and it was it just blew my mind i was in, in love with it um now what happened was i want to say that i i was a bit eccentric as a child so one day I was ill, ill enough to be sick. That's when we lived back in Rundu. I was ill enough to be sick and I was, <laughs> that doesn't make sense. I was ill and I wound up in the hospital. And after that, they said I had to be transferred to Rundu, I mean to Winduk, to the Winduk uh, Intermediate Hospital, the Kadutur Intermediate Hospital. And they told me I could only take one of my parents with me. The, the parent that I chose was my dad. He was a fun one. He was the one who bought me stuff. It was just, it was a, it was a no brainer. So we ended up in Windhoek and he bought me a Superman suit while we were here. Thankfully there was nothing wrong, nothing major wrong. I was sent back home, but I had that Superman suit for a while and I would just, I wore it once and I sort of, I, I would actually jump off the, I, I learned to jump off the roof eventually with it. I didn't know, I didn't think I could fly, but I just, I love the idea of wind rushing through my hair and just the feel of falling, you know, free falling. It, it sort of braces me for reality. It makes me feel like I'm alive sometimes. Um, I love chasing wind. If I see a whirlwind or dust devil, I will run to it. As a kid, I would run to it and I would just, just, just play around in it, you know. I love the feeling of it. I would love the feeling of like uh, I could just be lifted up if it was strong enough. I loved watching tornado movies and flight was the one thing that drew me to Superman. Now, um, the one show that really taught me what Superman was was the, the show Smallville. It ran for about 11 years from 2001 to 2011, should be 2012 anyways. Um, the one thing that I love about this show was that it showed you how Superman was as a kid. It showed you basically Superboy. You know, how he learned how to master his powers, how he discovered most of his powers. And the one thing about him that they had was he could not fly until the very last episode. Okay, there were moments in between where he could fly because of some other reason, but he could not consciously fly until the last episode. Until the last episode when you had flight, that's when you knew he was Superman. That's when he actually became Superman. The flight made him who he was. Before then, he was just, you know, the red and blue blur. He was, you know, Clark Kent, whatever. He's Superboy, you know, he wasn't Superman. Um, now, what I mean by Superman dying of cancer here is essentially I'm going to talk about my dad. Um, I'm going to talk about how 
Superman lost his powers. How Superman, Superman's bones thinned out, his muscles waned, and he essentially became the shell of his former self. You know, his bones became brittle, his muscles were wasted, and he could barely hold his own weight. Um, to illustrate this, I would to illustrate the supermanness of my dad was, I think I'll talk about a story that my brother told me. Um, but before we get there, let me just discuss a few things. He was born in 1970, and he fought in the liberation struggle of Namibia. He was a soldier, so he was part of NDF. And shortly after that, he joined the police academy and became a police officer. And then after that, he became, I think, an autocrat. That's what he used to call it. So he worked in the government, and he worked his way up to a very esteemed position until he was essentially happy with his life and and very very fulfilled for a man i'd say you know so the story i'd like to illustrate or talk about was that my brother told me was one time when um he was staying with my dad alone and the old man went out and he left the kid in the house he locked the door he told the kid lock the doors lock everything i'll be back now the house that we stayed in had um, a gate that had to be locked as well. So everything the kid just locked everything. He locked the gate. He locked the front door He locked everything and he left and he went to sleep when the old man came back my dad. That's why I'm Superman. Yeah, that's, I'll be calling the old man from now when the old man came back um, He found everything locked So he's there with his car parked outside. He can't get inside. He can't get in the house He can't get in the yard and What he says is what the kid tells me my younger brother tells me is that the old man jumps the fence, he jumps the fence, he goes into the house, into the yard, and he finds an open window, and luckily enough, this open window in the kitchen had a view of the keys there on the counter, but it was just far away, out of reach. So what the old man does, he takes a broom, he somehow manages to maneuver the keys towards himself, gets the keys, unlocks for himself, gets in the house, and in the yard with his car, and next thing the kid apparently wakes up the next morning and finds my dad there and he's like what how did you get in here you know it was a shock for him <laughs> um besides that i like to say he loved to talk about news he loved to talk about current events that's one thing that we actually discussed about that we sort of saw we found middle ground on it was something that we had common in you know, news would be happening, news would be on, and we just talk about it. I discuss things with him, I'd ask him questions, and he was like a fountain of knowledge. You know, he would basically have all the answers that I needed, essentially. Now, Superman dying of cancer. Um, he was diagnosed with cancer about, I want to say, six or seven years before he died, right? So six or seven years before he died, diagnosed of cancer, he was, they say he caught, they caught it early, it was treated, he had surgery, he had, key, he was going, undergoing chemo, and for a while he was sort of fine, you know, we only found out about it after the surgery, after everything, then my dad tells us, no, I had cancer, but now I'm fine, you know, I'm recovering now, you could see he was recovering, but he looked, he looked ragged and all that, but he looked still, he still looked like himself, you know, he still had his powers. And a few years after the diagnosis, a few years after the recovery, um, he was diagnosed six or seven years after, before he died. So three years after that, he was fine. You know, cancer-free. That was the idea. But he came back. Now, when he came back, um, he was living with us. And there were some bumps in the road for us because essentially we had to be the ones taking care of him. And in this case, I'd say I had to be the one taking care of him. I remember one night where where I found him, not found him rather, but he called to me from his room, you know, he called to me from his room and told me and, and called to me and, and I found him there. He had vomited everywhere, all over the floor and I had to clean it up. And to me, that was, I don't know, when I did it, I sort of, I did it mechanically, you know, I was like, just 
I got the mop, I got the, the wash bucket, I cleaned everything. I asked him if he needed anything. He went back to bed. And I think that was the last time he actually asked me for help because, or rather that was the first time I remember asking him asking me for help because I know he had been suffering with it for a long time. And before then, he must have needed me before then, but he probably didn't call me because, he, like I said, Superman, you know, he was essentially still himself. He took care of himself. He, he wanted to be independent, and he was independent. So, a few months before he died, um, let's say five or yeah, five or four months before he died, he had this massive surgery, right? And after the surgery, when I saw him in his in his hospital bed immediately after the surgery, you know, I, I went there with my mom, my dad. I went there with my mom, my uncle, my younger brother, and I think one of our uncles, another one of our uncles, and we saw him, right? When I saw him, that was the first time I actually worried that he might die. That was the first time I actually uh, pictured him. I pictured death, the grip of death around him. Because in that moment there, I could see death around him. I could see that the end for him was near. And for me, I felt like he, he could die at that moment. I, I was worried he was dying at that moment. But he persevered, you know. When I went home that day, after seeing him like that, after the surgery, he looked so weak and fragile. You know, he had visibly lost weight you know he looked visibly just he looked ill more he had been living with cancer for a while but at that moment i just i looked at it and i, I could not i could say that's the moment that i that he lost his powers that's the, the moment that he became immortal and he started spiraling towards death the green reaper was there that day and when i went home I prematurely wrote about how how horrible I felt about it, you know, how painful it was to see him like that. And in the months following that, when he came home, you could um, you could see there were moments where I could see the de the death in his eyes, you know, moments where you could see that he had given up, moments where you could see that he just didn't f look like one of the living. I know that's a harsh thing to say, but it's what it looked like, you know. He could barely carry his own weight, barely take two steps, you know. Before then, he would go on like, he still had, the, the cancer had come back, right? But there were still moments where he just, he was still himself. Before then, he would go on jogs and stuff. And this was while he was taking chemotherapy and taking medications and he was still in pain, but... He was still Superman, you know, he still had that strength about him. You could still feel the air of, of life around him. But after that surgery, slowly and little by little, he began to lose himself. You know, he... I think I even stopped talking to him the way I used to, you know. I remember one time he told me, he was like, why don't you talk to him, you know. I was on the phone with my mom telling her about my, my grades and... He caught me at the end of the conversation. I said bye. And he was like, why don't you talk to me like that? You know. And honestly, I didn't know what to say at that time. Now that I think about it, I think I was just... I didn't want to be around him. I didn't want to talk to him because I was worried that I would see more of his life fading away. So after that... When Superman actually did die of cancer, um, the day that he died of cancer, I remember going to him. But I didn't go to the, he was he had been admitted to the hospital and by that time I was sort of numb to the feeling about it. And I was like I don't wanna say wondering when he would go, but I didn't think he would die that time because he had been in and out of the hospital all the time. He would get admitted after the surgery. He would get admitted and he would come back home, then get readmitted, then come back home. I thought it was just another, you know, readmission that would lead to another release. But, but he didn't make it that last time. 
So that last time, the last day of your life, I feel bad because I feel horrible actually, you know, like a failure of a son because when I went to him, I wasn't there to care for him. I wasn't there to be his, someone to talk to, someone for him to, if I had known that it was the last moments I had with him, I probably would have done things differently. I went to him because, because the month before I had bumped someone's car and I promised the person money. I promised the person money to fix their car. And I went to him basically to get money for, <laughs> to fix the car. And I, I remember he was struggling to get the access to his bank, banking details, his banking app. And I was, I was just insistent, like I need the money now, you know. I, I don't think I was pushy, but I was definitely not considerate. So when I left, I told him, I'll be back with my with Devin, the kid, my younger brother, to see you tomorrow. And yeah, you know, at 3 a.m. or so, we get the call, I get the call, and it didn't come directly from the hospital. It came from a family member who had visited him earlier, and they said he had passed on, you know, and that was the end. He died on May Day. And I don't want to say if it didn't hit me hard at the moment because for me, I had sort of been expecting it. Like I said, to me, he sort of died that those many months ago during the surgery, after the surgery, when I saw him. For me, that's when I saw death around him. That's when I was actually worried about his life. And that's when I felt like that was the most painful and traumatizing part about the entire experience. But after that, after he died, I I was robot, robotic about it. I wasn't, I wasn't, I didn't process my emotions essentially. And it only hit me like months later. So looking back on it now, Superman dying of cancer. Um, looking back on it now, I wish I'd talked to him more. Um, I feel like his death was inevitable after that surgery, but I could have made his his life a bit longer. I could have extended his life a bit longer by taking better care of him, by talking to him, by showing him that I cared, you know. I don't even think I told him I loved him. Now, let me not say that I, I did not tell him I loved him. It was a thing, you know, it's one thing about me, I... I don't tell people that I love them. I don't tell people that I care about them. I just, I don't know, I expect them to know, you know, I'm here because I do care. But I feel like I should have said something. I feel like I should have just sat down and just talked to him simply for the sake of it. So yeah, that's how Superman died of cancer. Anyways, this was the Musings of a Madman. I was your host and please, Talk to your loved ones. Tell them you love them. You know, just make them feel involved and make them feel... Make them feel loved. But most importantly, talk to them. Because that's one thing that sticks in my mind now, you know. Why didn't I just talk to him? Talk to him about literally anything and everything, you know. Just, yeah. Alright, this... Sorry if this is a bit low, um, I had to keep my voice down because it's 4am and there are people next door probably. Alright, stay safe and sleep tight.